Sun Banan Dimlang, hello, it's Simply Spisser here and welcome back to my YouTube channel but also a special welcome to you if you are listening to the audio podcast, Simply Do The Work. Today's guest is an independent queer artist from Limpopo, South Africa who blends traditional African elements with pop and R&B to create his own unique immersive sound. Through his music, he speaks about various personal and social issues and uses his platforms to talk about the issues and his experiences as a young creative in South Africa. Allow me to welcome Mudiwa. Now, before we get into this interview, let me just put a disclaimer and say that as you all know, South Africa, we are going through load shedding. And because of load shedding, it did make the network a bit unstable, but we pushed through, we made it work. I'm really excited for us to get into this interview. We spoke about his journey of music, we also spoke about the challenges that he's faced, and he gives some really practical insights and advice for young creatives in South Africa. So without further ado, let's jump right into this conversation. Okay, so today's guest is someone that I met online like late 2018. And over the years, we've gone to really know each other. We've discussed many issues from music, queer topics, Black Lives Matter. And I'm so excited to have you here. Welcome, Mudiwa. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Ciso. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. Uh, yeah, I'm great. I have no complaints. Um, it's a great Sunday afternoon. And yeah, that's it. You are a musician mm-hmm. and you have three EPs out. But before we dive into that, I want to know about your upbringing. How did you get into music? And, you know, how did like key milestones that brought you to where you are today? Um... Okay. Well, I started singing in church. Um, very uh, weird beginning for a queer person, but uh, that's where we had to start. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was nice. Like you get like get a lot of singing practice, and then you fall in love with music, and you start learning about spirituality, which is not really like the spirituality that's like um, kind of dynamic. It's like one sided and like very. Um, I don't know. Um, Christian specific uh, and then you just grow that way and then you start singing you start singing for everyone every chance you get I remember I used to sing so many talent shows one so many talent shows I'd sing, and in high school and in primary school and then you know your art teachers or your English um, teachers they just love you so they give you so many opportunities then you go and then you sing also mm-hmm. actually I had like this very uh unique relationship with my principal every single time a guest would come to school he'd literally call me to sing <laughs> which is crazy now when I think about it. <laughs> literally I had to sing every time someone came to school so I got used to that and then I grew my confidence and yeah, I started learning about like uh you know just like music from home I think m- most of like the music I used to listen to is a uh, young queer artists are like is like gospel so that is what influenced me a lot and also i used to listen to uh, a lot of traditional sibedi music it's called mapaidi and dinaka and all those kind of things and my friends are very interested in that and so that kind of influenced my the kind of like i only started looking into r&b and pop and all those sorts of things when i got to university and and yeah, so that's that's been my introduction to music, actually. But yeah, that's it. Wow, that's. I think you've got. You know, I feel like a lot of singers they talk about how they started in church, and it's like it's like a, it's a common story that we often hear. But I also love how you talk about how you also were surrounded by the African, you know, the traditional elements. I think that really does shine through in your music. Your music is very much. It's kind of like it's very unique. Like when I listen to it, sometimes I can hear okay these elements remind me of this artist or that artist, but you're still unique to you. So I want to know, like, who are, like, some artists that influence you and how do you take those influences to create your own sound and not just, you know, like, copycat them? Uh, I'm influenced by a lot of artists, but, like, my top five definitely would be uh, Laurent Vula, Solange, uh, Neo. Um, Aurora, I talk about this all the time actually, it just never changes <laughs> the list is <laughs> the same and 
the other artists they come in and out. Uh, there are certain specific projects that inspire me, and some that don't. But uh, and then Chloe and Hallie, I love them. They're very recent, but like I've I've loved them uh, from the beginning. But um, yeah, they all they influence how I actually approach music and how I sing and how I write. And I love different things from all of them. And so yeah, those are like my inspirations. Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. So I was wondering, like, along the way, what are some of the challenges that you faced and, like, how did you overcome them? Uh, in terms of music, the biggest challenge is not having money. Like, that is mm. <laughs> the biggest challenge for any artist, actually. Um, when you have money, a lot of things are just possible. And so I feel like for me, that was, like, a very specific problem for me because... Um, in order for you to access a lot of people that can help you in your music, you need money. And if you don't have money, and I think most people are students, and I just saw them, they'd be like, yeah, I'm going to a recording studio or I'm going to meet a producer X. And, and I was just wondering, how do they know all these people? And it's like, they actually have money. Like their parents, they give them a lot of money. I met uh, um, someone and they knew Elaine personally and so they they'd always send these links and she's in America or that's before she was famous she's had money mm. she's had those kind of like access and like when you break up people just think oh yeah I mean you know they they probably didn't have anything they just made it out of nothing and it's like no, they actually had a lot of money leading up to that moment, and and yeah, so that 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 is a big problem for me. But um, I think as I grow up, I'm starting to uh, kind of save up more and kind of take more time be, uh, creating a project so that I have more time and more money so that I make better work. But yeah, that is that. Um, but yeah, you were talking about how money is you know one of the biggest problems and i think i can relate to that as well you know like in creating content right people say you need to have the best microphone you need to have the best camera the best list all of that and those things cost money right mm -hmm. and i know you spoke about how sometimes people who mean well will give you all sorts of advice and critiques so learning how have you set boundaries with regards to the critiques you let people give you with regards to music well or anything that you create yeah, I, I, I get a lot of advice, like from people who are just meaning well, they just think, oh my God, if you could just do this, if you could just do that, and you could just do this. And it's like, all of that you said requires money and I don't have money. And if you really want to help me, you should give me money. I can do that all by myself. I know that <laughs> I'm actually the artist. Like I have vision, I've studied that I don't know that. I just don't have the money. And so a lot of people do that kind of advice. Uh, the way that I do it, I turn off my comments. I really did. I at, I was always open to people. I would to do this. Me how. Just have all <laughs> You're breaking <laughs> up a bit. I can't hear you. Oh. I used to send people links to my music back then and oh, yeah. I'd be like, um, tell me how you feel and all these things. And I'd be asking for their opinion and they would give me all this unsolicited advice and I'd be so upset about it. And I'm like, Ugh. but it's me. I got myself into that situation because I asked them, what did they think? Mm -hmm. And so now I don't, I, because I never actually even needed that. Like, I just wanted them to listen and maybe fall in love with the music. And so now I don't even give them the chance. And also, I just outright say, like, I don't need your advice right now. So, also, because sometimes when you give them art you've been working on, they need to watch it and, like, enjoy it and then shut up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like I've actually learned a lot from you in that regard that sometimes you don't need to take the advice. Like sometimes I see some comments, like, you know, what? I'm just going to delete this comment. I'm not even going to interact. 
not going to engage because this person is... Yeah, I feel like we want to have a conversation about how people should just meet you where you are at and not try to yeah. project their own ideas or their own vision. And I think what I love about you is you can... You have a vision. You say that like, the real challenge is the challenge of money, which I think a lot of artists think about. Like you mentioned how it seems like... having a label has benefits what is your stance on that um how oh, dare it uh the video has been like in my side so. <laughs> but um <laughs> my opinion on that uh my opinion on that is that um i d- i feel like eventually i might need it uh but i would rather prefer that um i save up my own money and just get to a place where or like find a sponsor that just will not require that kind of creative control over what I do or where mm. I won't owe them that kind of I don't know it, I feel like most record labels are literally alone and I just I don't think I want that kind of support I want I don't know I, I think I'd rather be independent because then I'll have a lot of creative freedom and also I love like very weird ideas and I'm not really always like um like commercial sex success is very important to me but it's not always like the biggest priority for me uh sometimes I feel very moved to create very specific kind of music but through people be the best experience but if push comes to shove and that's the only option i will in that case but uh if i do end up saving enough enough money and just being very well off i won't even try to get a record label i'm not even gonna <laughs> but yeah that's all fair enough fair enough yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned commercial success isn't something that you are like necessarily chasing. So how do you measure success for yourself? Uh, success for me is when more people respond to my art, I know that I'm doing the right thing. And over the years, there's been more and more response. Like, uh, and I, I, I've, I, I keep you know, I, I do my own kind of like journaling of like every time I release a project, what happens? And I look back on the experiences of like the past projects I've done and what happened. And I can see that there's like improving reaction to everything that I do. And so eventually I just think I want to create art that I feel I like can create more and more responses within people and, you know, that kind of thing. So I do measure my art based on like how many people are interested after I release something. Are more people interested after this? So if less people are interested, I'm like, hmm, maybe I might not be um, kind of uh, perfectly translating my vision into my art. So I go back to the drawing board and kind of make changes that I feel like, okay, this is where I can compromise, this is where I can do this and this and that. Because I do know when I'm creating art, when I am being extremely uh, selfish (laughs) and when (laughs) and where I can specifically like uh, be like, you know what, I don't need to be that selfish here or this and this and that. So I know those kind of changes I I can make. So um, I just go back to those and I'm like, and every time it works like a charm every time i change those things i know <laughs> it gets better so i know i i always take notes i always i study my own work and the kind of um decisions i make you know i i do study myself or okay now i'm going to do this and i want to see how that is going to affect my music and also uh it's very easy to measure um my success because I actually have the stats so there's also like a (laughs) realistic Mm. (laughs) part of like um, um, a measuring stick I guess that I use but yeah 
Yeah. So I know you also over the years you have released music and removed music, and it's always I've always wanted. What is your thought process? Is it part of just gauging the reaction of people? Like sometimes my favorite song one day is on Spotify, the next day it's gone. I'm just like, whoa, what is happening? <laughs> no me being called out. Uh, well, I sometimes okay. Sometimes I listen to I I continuously listen to my music, and I'm like, what kind of overall artist image am I creating? And some songs, the way that I made them, I'm like, I'm I I don't think this ref- that I hate the song, but I hate how I I know better now. anymore like I'll, I'll i'll reintroduce the knowledge that i've acquired now uh and yeah so that's why i delete certain music and sometimes like i release music for only a season like i just feel like oh yeah i don't feel mm-hmm. strongly about this but i feel it strongly right now so let me release it and then when the feeling fades then i will take it back <laughs> <laughs> power to you like you're just owning your art but yeah I, I know like with your latest ep through the apprehension those were songs which were previously released i had heard them before yeah. and you know through the apprehension is also it's your most recent it's also your most streamed project on spotify like, yeah. what was the process like in creating through the apprehension i'm just curious to know uh i actually forgot <laughs> You know, I whenever <laughs> I create art, uh, I get into this mind that just is so engulfed in the experience that, like, once I get out of it, it's like, uh, it's like you were in this dream, and like now the details mm. are all foggy and everything. Um, <laughs> but I think, uh, what was I doing? Hmm. Hmm. I, I, I. Oh, so what does it mean to you now? Oh, okay. Now it be. Oh yeah, I really love that project. Actually, uh, for that project, I challenged myself to kind of um, be be less serious, uh, but be uh, more quick and to the point with the things that I'm seeing in my music. And I also wanted to steer away from being um, very mysterious. Then I also wanted to uh, start uh, exploring, imagining myself uh, not just as a human, I guess, just as a kind of queer entity, I guess. Yeah. I think that was the whole point of that project. And so most of the things that I was doing in that project were kind of like just imagining myself as different entities of my queerness. It was a very, it's such a specific <laughs> experience. But yeah, I, mm. I, I'm challenging myself in my music to start exploring what queerness means to me with each coming project. And so with more projects comes kind of like my exploration into my imagination. Like I, in one of the songs, I imagine myself as a cat, as a gay cat. And I, <laughs> it's such a specific fantasy, but it really just worked for me. Like I was just, I was just like, oh yeah, what would I, I think I'm a gay cat? And so I wrote a song about it, which is a free. <laughs> and it's one of my favorite songs. I, it's. To really, I want to start being very mystical in my music. It's just being fun. I am. I'm, I'm still. I feel like um, gearing myself up to just making fun music. Like, yeah, this is fun. Let me do it. This is fun. Let me do it. Instead of like taking myself too seriously, which I did in the past. And yeah, that is it. Yeah, and I think we noticed that with artists like Doja Cat, Doja Cat does not too seriously. But she can still tell she really respects the art of music and the art of performing. Yeah. And I think because she doesn't take herself so seriously, that's why people are falling in love with her and her personality. And I guess I, I'm really, I'm sort of seeing like a similar trend in where you're going with your music. Yeah, oh, wow. 
I hopefully that because I feel like being playful but also being serious it just eases people but it also draws them in and so I really like that and maybe hmm, wow, now that you mentioned Doja Cat you know yeah you know what it actually is crazy because the artists that are like really popular actually I think they affect how I <laughs> approach my art as well even though like I would never uh, list them as like direct references but I do kind of like look at being a certain artist and I'm like wow I like what they're doing maybe that and I, even though I never really do like direct work to kind of replicate what they're doing that kind of like kind of gives me a freedom I guess or permission to kind of play with my art in that kind of way but yeah that. Yeah. I wanted to know with regards to putting your queerness in your music. Yeah. Because there are many artists who are queer, but in the closet because they feel like to be commercially successful, it would be better if they hide themselves. Was there ever a battle in terms of debate regarding that? No. Well, no, I'm lying. I think yes, because. I'm very Christian and I come from a Christian household. And so I don't really, so like in most of my prayers, I, I still, even now, still affects me because I don't really always be like, eh, you know, one plus one is two. Like I always just, it's always just so poetic, but like, it's like little things. Like if you're queer, you'll notice, but if you're not, you might not. Like it's, and I hate that. I, I want to get to a point where I'm just like, very in your face like queer i would really love that in one of my projects oh my god i think it uh maybe it is freezed but uh but yeah i i would like to get to okay yeah you're back now oh yeah but what i was saying it's no longer poetic like it's just <laughs> oh you're back <laughs> okay but yeah i I'm not really afraid. Like, I feel like if I wanted to, I would. I just haven't had a song where I need to be, like, like very If I ever feel that way, I will. But I don't, I don't really care that much you know, about, like, people's reaction at this point in my life. And it's just that a, a song like that hasn't come to me. But most of my songs, they have, like, some queer elements. But they're very... They're not, like... In, they're not like <laughs> in the forefront. So I I think I mean your experiences that much. Yeah, no, I get what you mean because it's not like in your face. So I feel like for with a fruity apprentice is probably the most in your face type of I know. um queer <laughs> reference <laughs> in your catalog. But yeah, I totally I can relate to the whole poetic thing because growing up I used to write poems to sort of express or like navigate my queer feelings. So I was like, you know, if my mom ever finds this because it's a poem, it's actually more, might not be able to read the subtext, but I will know and I'm able to just get those feelings out. So I can totally relate to that poetic aspect. <laughs> yeah, very that, very that. Yeah, I, I do that a lot. I think, yeah, and also that's the thing that I learned about, like my love for poetry was really my love for hiding. So I'm kind of starting to... Mm every time I want to be poetic in my music I'm like is that uh, really going to do the art justice or do I just want to hide so I always have to kind of fight myself out of it like uh, you don't need to be poetic here you can just be like yeah <laughs> hi gay <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah that is that okay and so I was wondering, do you have any advice for someone who is an up-and-coming young creative in this economy? Because, hey, it's bad out there. Uh, my advice is... I don't know if this advice is going to help anyone, but... Um, <laughs> this is actually bad advice <laughs> because I'm, I'm going at it from experiential uh, wisdom, but I know... Like, people sometimes will say, uh, just do it, even if you don't have the resources. But sometimes you'll, ha you'll experience less bullying if you wait until you have resources. So if you want to get bullied more, 
uh, you can do it when you don't have resources. But if you want to have uh, less bullying experiences, wait until you have all the resources and that will help you have a more ex uh, pleasant experience with your art. But yeah, that's my advice. Yeah, that's beautiful because yeah, I think especially in this day and age of like this culture, like Twitter trolling, like people are just mean, people are out there to be mean. So I think it's yeah. important that you're coming with the real past, like, you know what, if you don't want to be put before now, especially like I, I wish I had advice like that starting out because it would have saved my mental health, it would have made the process of creating and discovering myself through creating a lot less stressful. Yeah. So, bad. Yeah. Yeah, so I just wanted to know, like, have you ever had experiences of burnout or just like how, or like even writer's block and how did you overcome that? Yeah, I have that all the time, actually. Um, I think um, this is like from a different part of my life, but like because of academics, um, I went in, uh, I went through a depression, I guess. Um, I think sometimes like, I feel the pressure to always have like something productive happening in my life. And whenever I'm having a burnout, I'm like, that's an okay thing to experience because uh, I just sit and relax and other kind of perspectives, take care of my body and my mind. Um, I'll be better for it. So I kind of just ex accept that um, you know, it's okay to have writer's block. Like, you're not old. It's very human to not always be, like, <laughs> on top. Like, but, like, mm. as an artist, sometimes you can use your body, like, as if it's, like, a computer or a machine, and you just expect all this productivity from it. That's, like, very unrealistic. And so, uh, recently, I, I've experienced a, a lot of writer's block. I haven't made music in a long time. But I'm having a better experience of navigating it because I don't feel the pressure to always be productive anymore. Yeah, I think that is that. Yeah, I can also relate. I feel like also in this digital economy with like, you know, there's so many creatives, there's so many artists trying to make it. You always feel pressure to always be present, always be seen, always yeah. putting out something. I know, like, I'll be having a break, I'll be stressed, okay, are people going to forget about me? And even other people are like, oh, why don't you make something? But also, I think it's better to just take that time for yourself. So when you do come back and make something, it's something that you're actually proud of, not just something you just put out mm -hmm. for the sake of having something out. Yeah, very that. Very that. I agree with that. Yeah, that, that is a very... No, oh, that is good. That is, that is what I found that works way better. If you just stay back, like, just be Adele. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is that. Even Beyonce takes a break, guys. Beyonce, the whole entire Beyonce. Like, she takes an artist break. Like, that, you know, when I really, that really registered into my brain. I couldn't believe that I once expected myself to always be productive like that. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, that is that. All right. So I just wanted to know, like, currently, what are you busy with? Like, what are you doing with your time? Like, I, I know you said you haven't made any music recently. So what is up in your life at the moment? <laughs> Don't mind <sharing. laughs> uh, You know, actually, like, literally yesterday was the first time that I actually went out uh, to a producer. And I'm like, hey, I want to hear some of your stuff and played some things. And I like some of the things. So I actually might write again. But I don't know when I'll be done. But I will definitely be taking my time. Like, I don't think this year I might release music, but um, I don't know if that'll happen anytime soon. But so far, I haven't been working on anything. If you're on art, listen to my art. It's still art. <laughs> it doesn't expire, <laughs> you know. And yeah, so I'm I'm not really working on anything like major right now. Also, like, I have, like, really personal experiences that I really want to be present in right now. And I feel like art will take away my focus from those experiences. But after I'm done with these experiences, I will be ready and guns blazing. And hopefully my bank balance will be ready as well. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that is that. All right. But on that note, it's been really lovely having you. I um, want to know where can people find you if they want to get in touch? 
Uh, <laughs> well, everywhere. Uh, you can even Google me. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, Dira. So yeah, um, I think on Instagram my name is um, yeah, it's just Mudira. I think and on Twitter it's Mudira, and you'll just if you search you'll find me. And I'm not very difficult to find on the internet. But um, and yeah, you can find my music everywhere where you get music. And yeah, that's it. And yeah, that's it actually. All right, thank you so much. We made it, even though the Wi-Fi was being homophobic and giving us some issues. I but know, thank you so much for taking the time. Hater. Oh my God, the internet was a hater today, the Wi-Fi. But I'm so grateful for you having me. And yeah, I appreciate it, actually. Wow. This is actually my second podcast interview, so uh, I'm very elated. I'm like, ooh, not me being on podcast. <laughs> Yes, it's just the beginning. This is just the beginning. <laughs> I know, but yeah, thank you so much, and I appreciate you. Um, but you know, it's just it's one of those challenges. It's just part of the journey of being a creative here in South Africa. I was actually reading somewhere, and this is me like debating that you know apparently a lot of South Africans are now struggling to get these online tutoring jobs because of the constant load shedding. So these are just some like you guys saw practically firsthand the challenges that we face in this country. But we push through. We make the most of it. So yeah, guys, please do check out, check him out on social media. Check out his music. If you if you actually if you've been an old gym, YouTube channel his music is actually featured in a number of my vlogs from like 2019 I think his music is there featured in my vlogs and so if you're an OG like the voice the music the style should not be foreign to you but yeah before I let you go if you're not yet subscribed please do subscribe follow share and also feel free to reach out to me at simply so on Instagram and Twitter where you can find me so yeah until the next one until you hear from me or see me I love you so much Bye.